We are told incessantly by the followers of Muhammad and their apologists that Islam is a peaceful religion. How real and accurate are these statements? As our listeners have been finding out throughout our series, the word Islam does not mean peace since it is rooted in the verb aslama, meaning submission only. Most important of all are the pictures that people around the world see on a daily basis from all over the globe regarding beheadings, suicide bombings, stoning to death, rape, abductions, slaughter, mutilation of the dead, the use of civilians as a human shields, hangings, throwing people alive from high buildings, plus more similarly depraved acts that actually require not many further comments from us regarding the peacefulness of the cult of Muhammadan Islam. We must add more to the above. Pictures of little Muhammadan children being indoctrinated in schools and mosques with hating all so-called unbelievers, 80% of humanity, all Christians, Buddhists, Hindus, animists, Jews, atheists, Sikhs, Baha'is, etc., etc., with some of them wearing simulated suicide bomb straps. It was Muhammad who, 1400 years ago, unilaterally declared total and eternal war against all those who do not believe, as he and his followers do. It was Muhammad who, 1400 years ago, split humanity into two camps. The camp of peace, Dar al-Salam, that of the Muhammadan Islam, and the camp of war, Dar al-Harb, the territories of all others. Muhammad in his Quran made his new cult and his followers superior to any and all unbelievers. Muhammad's agenda was simple and crystal clear, to proclaim himself as the new Messiah, his Quran as the new covenant, his Arabian followers as the new chosen people, and Mecca as the new Jerusalem. I shall now recite only a few self-evident examples from among hundreds of verses that fill the chapters of the Quran and Hadith to prove my statements. Al-Baqarah 2.120 Never will the Jews or the Christians be satisfied with thee unless thou follow their form of religion. Say, the guidance of Allah, that is the only guidance. Our religion is the baptism of Allah and who can baptize better than Allah? Since the baptism of Allah is the highest form, then all others are inferior. Al-Imran 3.19 The religion before Allah is Islam, submission to his will, and believe no one unless he follows your religion. If anyone desires a religion other than Islam, submission to Allah, never will it be accepted of him. The earlier two verses are elitist, discriminatory and racist, and are actually the precursors to Hitler's Deutschland über alles. Al-Ma'idah 5 This day have I perfected your religion for you, and completed my favor upon you, and have chosen for you Islam as your religion. Al-Tawbah 9.29 Fight those who believe not in Allah, nor the last day, nor hold that forbidden, which has been forbidden by Allah and His Apostle, nor acknowledge the religion of truth, even if they are of the people of the book, until they pay the jizya with willing submission and feel themselves humiliated. Even though the people of the book preceded Muhammad and his Qur'an in their belief in the one and only God of Israel and Jesus. Nonetheless, Muhammad demands that they are treated with utter contempt and subjugation because they do not believe that he is the Prophet of Allah. Al-Tawbah 9.33 It is he who hath sent his apostle with guidance and religion of truth, Islam, to proclaim it over all religions, even though the pagans may detest it. Again, the declared and unambiguous superiority complex of Muhammad is crystal clear. Al-Hajj 22.78 And strive in his cause, Jahidu, as you ought to. He has chosen you and has imposed no difficulties on you in religion. It is the cult of your father, Abraham. It is he who has named you Muslims both before and in this revelation. It is he who has named you Muslims both before and in this revelation has only one meaning that the Arab people who followed the earlier revelations, the Jews and the Christians of Arabia, are also called Muslims, just like the followers of Muhammad, since they were the first to submit to the will of the one and only God of Israel and Jesus. Al-Fatih 48.28 It is he who has sent his apostle with guidance and the religion of truth, Islam, to proclaim it over all religions, and enough is Allah for a witness. Al-Saf 
61.9. It is he who has set his apostle with guidance and the religion of truth, Islam, that he may proclaim it over all religions, even though the pagans may detest it. Sunan Abu Daud 4310 narrated by Abu Huraira. The Prophet said, There is no prophet between me and him, that is Jesus. He will descend to the earth. When you see him, recognize him, a man of medium height, reddish fair, wearing two light yellow garments, looking as if drops were falling down from his head, though it will not be wet. He will fight the people for the cause of Islam. He will break the cross, kill swine, and abolish jizya. Allah will perish all religions except Islam. He will destroy the Antichrist and will live on the earth for 40 years and then he will die. The Muslims will pray over him. Can any sane human being explain this drivel? Now we come to the masterpiece of tolerance, the Charter of Omar, which does not leave much to the human intellect. In the name of Allah, the merciful and compassionate. This is a letter to the servant of Allah, Omar ibn Khattab, commander of the faithful, from the Christians. When you came against us, we asked you for safe conduct, aman, for ourselves, our descendants, our property, and the people of our community, and we undertook the following obligations towards you. We shall not build in our cities or in their neighborhood new monasteries, churches, covens, or monks' cells, nor shall we repair, by day or by night, such of them as fall in ruins or are situated in the quarters of the Muslims. We shall keep our gates wide open for passers-by and travelers. We shall give board and lodging to all Muslims who pass our way for three days. We shall not give shelter to, in our churches or in our dwellings to any spy, nor bide him from the Muslims. We shall not teach the Quran to our children. We shall not manifest our religion publicly, nor convert anyone to it. We shall not prevent any of our kin from entering Islam if they wished. We shall not seek to resemble the Muslims by imitating any of their garments, the turban, footwear, or the parting of the hair. We shall not speak as they do, nor shall we adopt their kunyas. We shall not mount on saddles, nor shall we gird swords, nor bear any kind of arms, nor carry them on our persons. We shall not engrave Arabic inscriptions on our seals. We shall not sell fermented drinks. We shall not clip the fronts of our heads. We shall always dress in the same way wherever we may be, and we shall bind the zunar round our waists. We shall not display our crosses or our books in the roads or markets of the Muslims. We shall use only clappers in our churches very softly. We shall not raise our voices when following our dead. We shall not show lights on any of the roads of the Muslims or in their markets. We shall not bury our dead near the Muslims. We shall not take slaves who have been allotted to Muslims. We shall not build houses overtopping the houses of the Muslims. We accept these conditions for ourselves and for the people of our community, and in return we receive safe conduct. If we in any way violate these undertakings for which we ourselves stand surety, we forfeit our covenant, dimma, and we become liable to the penalties of contumacy and sedition. It is imperative that our listeners comprehend the following. One, the Muhammadans were imposing degrading and discriminatory rules on the conquered peoples in their own homeland by the aggressors. Two, the Muhammadan Muslims were protecting the natives from whom? Three, every condition above represents utter contempt for the religious beliefs and feelings of the subjugated peoples for their culture, their heritage, and their dignity. Four, although generally they were unmolested, it did not stop the leaders to have them massacred whenever they needed to distract the Muhammadans in times of stress. Five, while the Muhammadan Muslims in the majority of their countries continue to implement many of the above against all unbelievers, they with an obscene degree of hypocrisy, demand all human rights in the democracies and at the same time disloyally intend to bring down the institutions of the host countries to their abysmal level of intolerance, ignorance and stupidity. I would like to leave any further conclusions or comments to our listeners regarding the mercy and compassion of Muhammadan Islam vis-à-vis -vis the people of the book.